British media are reporting that the UK is on standby to send warplanes to the Persian Gulf. The jets would be stationed in the United Arab Emirates, just a couple of hundred kilometres from Iran. Let's talk about that, though, with anti-war activist John Reese's in London. John, good evening. And the, EU, the UAE apparently wants a bolstered British military presence there. Now, given Iran's recent threats to block oil shipments through the Strait of Hormuz and the uh, huge uh, drama that would incur, will UK fighter jets secure or indeed destabilise the Gulf? Well, I think it's bound to destabilise the situation. Uh, and this is not the first report we've had of um, Western uh, de increased deployments in the area. There have been a whole spate of them in recent uh, weeks and months, which all point in the same direction of increased US, um, British and uh, other Western nations uh, deploying a great deal more than the normal commitment to the, um, to the Gulf area. And that's big enough. Uh, in uh, in uh, in normal times. Mm. I mean, Britain's Ministry of Defence is saying it regularly deploys planes in the UAE. It's uh, not over concerns about Iran's nuclear programme. Nonetheless, though, I guess it, you've got to ask, is it a wise move at this sensitive time, don't you? Yes, and I think we're coming to um, a decision point here. I think many people understand that the um, condition of the Western stance towards both Syria and Iran um, is shaped by the US presidential elections. They're about to take place. Um, we, we know that a, a new pro-Western um, Syrian opposition group is supposed to be announced on the day of the US elections. And I think that whoever wins uh, the presidential election in the United States, we can expect uh, developments uh, in respect of Iran to move much more quickly after that as well. Yeah, I mean, if those planes did arrive, how would Tehran react, you think? Well, it, it, it's, it's bound to increase the sense of uh, isolation, bound to increase uh, the sense that um, a huge uh, economic, as we know from the sanctions regime, uh, diplomatic and now military force is um, ready for deployment against Iran. Of course, John, must be noted, mustn't it, that the, the Israeli Defence Minister said in London only this week that Iran's now pulled back from its alleged nuclear weapons programme. So it begs the question why this apparent escalation from other countries at this time? Yes, I think uh, we've seen a very complex series of sort of moves, counter moves, bluffs, statements and so forth in the course of the US elections about the exact timing and about relations between Israel and the United States over any attack on Iran. But as I say, I think that process is about to come to an end. Um, we, we read stories that the Israelis and the US have now come to an agreement about uh, a timescale uh, within which they must uh, deal with Iran. Um, so I don't say that that's going to happen the day after the US elections, but I do think that things will move on and will be clear exactly what the, the programme of uh, deploying uh, further pressure on the Iranian regime is um, in a, a week or so's time. And of course there's also this big issue of you can have it, uh, or we can have it, you can't. Activists accusing the British Foreign Secretary William Hague of double standards on Iran's nuclear programme. He never mentioned Israel's alleged stockpile when he met his Israeli counterpart. Why does it never come up in official talks? Well, uh, I think we all understand what the imperial structure of the, of the Middle East is, and that is that um, the Western powers, Britain, uh, then America, uh, with the support of Britain and other Western European powers, uh, believe that it has an absolute right to control this area of the globe, and it employs the uh, Israeli state as its watchdog in the, in the area. So the Israeli state is always beyond criticism, always beyond uh, reproach, always uh, given the unqualified support by the United States and by, by, by Britain. And, and, some of, and some of the most pro-Zionist statements have been made uh, by the current British Prime Minister, David Cameron. Really, really briefly, John, we've got 30 seconds. The British Defence Secretary says Europe must be ready to play a bigger role in North Africa and the Middle East. Does the region really need the UK's involvement right now? Well, I think any, any century, uh, any hundred years that opened up with the Sykes-Picot agreement, that is an agreement by a British politician and a French diplomat to draw the borders of the Middle East, and we look at what a hundred years of that history has looked like in terms of destabilisation, misery, exploitation, invasion and war, and you have to conclude that it is long overdue for the West to keep out. John Rees, we appreciate your time. Thanks for being on RT International. You're welcome.